The nickname, man. What a fun tradition of creating names that express affection. Nice hit. Amusement, a character trait. The man they call Bone because, because that's what his parents named him. Or it might be used to completely bash someone. He wants me to use his new nickname, but I just. Say it, you gotta say it. He wants me to introduce him as Dark Nowitzki, and I don't think that I should. <laughs> this tradition has been carried through American culture. It was practically stamped all over the rise of the MTV reality show, Jersey Shore. The random roommates all joined the cast, presenting their nicknames from the beginning. Nicole Snooky Polizzi. Party's here. Mike the Situation Soriento. Jenny, Wow Farley. And Paul, DJ Polly D Del Vigio. Nicknames, that's fun. Which names did I slaughter? Be honest. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Those nicknames carried this show to the rise of the MTV ratings and are now etched in the hearts and minds of reality TV lovers. Most people you ask probably wouldn't even know Snooky or JWoww's real names. Plus, most of us would rather not try to sound out those names quickly. That's the power of a great nickname, one that can carry someone to stardom. The NBA has similarly embraced the tradition of giving nicknames to the league's players. How some players get their nicknames might really surprise you. Let's dive into some of the league's best nicknames and how some of these fitting and sometimes hilarious names came to be. Much like how NBA games start with the singing of America's great national anthem to honor our servicemen and women, we will start with one service member that played in the NBA and had a Hall of Fame career. I'm talking about Admiral, Mr. David Robinson. Robinson was drafted as the first overall pick in the 1987 NBA draft, but never made his NBA debut until the 1989 season. After graduating high school, David enrolled into the United States Naval Academy. He chose to serve for two years before joining the NBA. He served as a civil engineering officer at the Kings Bay Naval Base in Georgia. It was there he was given the name The Admiral. Starting his career at age 24, he had an immediate impact on the Spurs and won an MVP award in 1995. You can't talk about the Admiral without talking about his giant teammate, Tim Duncan, AKA the Big Fundamental. This duo was dubbed the Twin Towers, the two torments of the league from 1997 to 2003, leading to the Spurs winning the NBA Finals two times. Tim Duncan was given the name the Big Fundamental due to his boring but extremely effective style of play. He also carried the nicknames Timmy and Stone Buddha. Tim Duncan played the game that time forgot. He didn't have to run fast or jump high, but he could eat opponents alive with his fundamental skills. Shaquille O'Neal once compared himself to Tim Duncan. He said, Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever play the game, period. He continued saying, I was probably 80% talent, 20% fundamentals. Tim Duncan was 80% fundamental and 20% talent. He got five rings and I got four. That still bugs the shit out of me. Duncan's style of play wasn't only effective for him, but it allowed him to make everyone around him better. That allowed him to win three more championships after Robinson retired. Boring or not, he's a legend. Speaking of Shaq, he might be the champion of nicknames. Most of those names coming from himself. His endless list of nicknames starting with Shaq Daddy, The Big Aristotle, Shaq Fu, Shaq Diesel, and Big Shamrock. He once named himself The Big Sewer, cause I got a lot of shit working. <laughs> that might be a way bigger share than any of us needed. Thanks Shaq. He was not only incredible at naming himself, but he's also credited for some of the best nicknames in recent history. He named teammate Dwayne Wade, The Flash. Is that, is that supposed to be my nickname? That's your nickname. Because of his incredible quickness and skill, named Tim Duncan, The Big Fundamental, and credited for naming Paul Pierce The Truth after Paul dropped 42 points on Shaq's Lakers. Shaq has always been a huge man with a huge personality and seen on multiple occasions, also a huge heart. It's led him to massive success in his NBA career and now in his tenure as an analyst on Inside the NBA. Shaq tattooed one of his biggest nicknames on his arm, Superman. Everybody knows that Superman's weakness is kryptonite. This Superman's kryptonite was none other than Yao Ming, AKA the Great Wall or the Dynasty. The nickname the Great Wall stemmed from his Chinese heritage and gigantic stature. Yao played all 10 years of his Hall of Fame career with the Houston Rockets but was forced to retire early due to reoccurring injuries. 
Yao Ming was the first and only person to ever block Shaq three consecutive times. At Yao Ming's Hall of Fame acceptance, Shaq joke, people like to say he's seven foot seven. But he's really like my favorite convenience store, 7-Eleven. Yao had fired at Shaq earlier, comparing him to a rhino on the court. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to Africa to see a real rhino, but it's not much of a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it was no joke stopping Shaq, and Yao did this as a rookie. Regarding Africa, we can talk about one of the best defensive players of all time, Dikembe Mutombo. He was known as Mount Mutombo due to the defensive prowess and being regarded as one of the best shot blockers to ever play the game. Climbing that mountain wasn't easy. Dikembe was born in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He also had a Hall of Fame career that bragged of four Defensive Player of the Year awards, a record he shares with Ben Wallace. By far the best blocks he ever made were in the 2013 Geico commercial though. That's the fifth floor problem. Mountain Maha. Finger wave was iconic. One legend before his passing that couldn't wave his fingers because of all the rings, 11 to be exact. We're talking about Bill Russell, the Lord of the Rings, a name shared with coach Bill Jackson who had 13. The nickname being pretty fitting for the player who holds the NBA record for the most championship title wins. He was also dubbed the Secretary of Defense. He was at the heart of the Boston Celtics franchise in the 1960s. As a player and coach, he reached the finals 12 times and won 11 of them. He also used his stardom to voice his commitment to social justice and civil rights. Another Russell you might know, Mr. Triple Double himself, Russell Westbrook. Russ holds the NBA record for the most career triple doubles. What? He's also collected some nicknames throughout his career. Names like West Beast, Beastbrook, and Little Fury. He also has a nickname that the reason behind it is only known by Westbrook himself, which is Brody. Aren't secrets the worst? Tell me why! Westbrook has been a high profile player of the league throughout his career. He's also remembered by some very memorable interactions with the media. No more questions for you, bro. During that interview, Russell was asked about the potential of our next star, James Harden. Harden has earned the nickname The Beard for his iconic, thick and fluffy facial hair. El Chapo, due to his elusive playing style reminiscent of the notorious Mexican drug lord who repeatedly escaped prison, and Jimbo Slice, stemming from the times when he appeared to be overweight on the court. His looks have also been compared to viral fighter Kimbo Slice and rap artist Rick Ross. <laughs> Harden's played on many stacked teams throughout the years. His current team is looking super stacked while fighting for the number one spot in the West. He's been reunited with Russell Westbrook as a member of the Los Angeles Clippers, a roster that also carries Paul George, AKA PG-13, and our next man of the hour, Kawhi Leonard. He's carried nicknames like The Claw, The Fun Guy, and The Terminator. The Claw was due to his gigantic hands and for the ability to get the ball when defending. These ball hawking skills have allowed him to win two Defensive Player of the Year awards. The Fun Guy nickname was given to him after his incredibly awkward speech in Toronto, the speech that sparked a horde of reactions due to his hysterical laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator nickname came from Kawhi's calm mentality during the playoffs. Also, built on his reputation of having a dry personality, he did get to team up with the original Terminator, though. Huge, it's a Terminator convention. He's the real Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Ever wondered who would win a battle between a Terminator and Spider-Man? As of now, the matchup is tied at five apiece. Spida, Donovan Mitchell, has become a very talented NBA star. The star was given his nickname by a former college teammate's dad. It was because he had long arms and was quick to get steals. Father never once called him by his first name. The name has stuck with Mitchell to this day, especially after showing off his incredible abilities back in the 2018 dunk contest. I think we all can agree that Spider shouldn't be allowed to jump that high. <laughs> nope. Nope. Hell no. It's only right that we go back to some legends. Let's start with the legend Clyde the Glide Drexler. The nickname came from his effortless glides to the basket. Drexler was famously known for his explosive first step that allowed him to easily get by defenders for his patented flights to the rim. He was truly known for these high-flying dunks and athleticism. His Hall of Fame career was highlighted with 10 All-Star Game appearances and an NBA championship with the Houston Rockets in 1995. Second legend, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, was famously known for his above-the-rim trademark skyhook. He was nicknamed the Big A, but more famously, the Tower of Power. Kareem held his name due to his humongous size and court presence. 
He's remembered as a goggle-wearing titan. He won six NBA championships in his career. He also held the record for the most career points scored until LeBron James broke it in 2023. Last but definitely not least, legend Wilt Chamberlain. He was known as the Goliath, Wilt the Stilt, and the Big Dipper. Wilt didn't really like most of his nicknames, especially the ones that referred to his size. The Big Dipper was the only one that he really liked. Most origin stories say this nickname came from people watching him dip his head as he went through doorways. The real story is similar, but goes back to his childhood. Wilt's basketball beginning started in a basement. He was so tall that he had to be very aware to avoid smashing his head on the pipes. In conclusion, looking into the origins of NBA players' nicknames offers us not only a glimpse into the players' personalities and backgrounds, but also sheds light on the rich history of basketball culture. From childhood nicknames passed down by family members to playful names given by teammates or fans, each nickname carries its own unique story. As we've explored in this video, these nicknames often transcend the court, becoming important parts of players' identities and legacies. Whether they promote laughter, awe, or respect, these nicknames serve as reminders of the colorful and enduring spirit of the NBA.